let's start with uh, what we are and what we do. Sure. So in, Infinity Fiber Company is a technology company uh, that is uh, based on the fact that there is so much textile waste around and somebody needs to deal with that. And uh, we are the solution for the cellulose-based materials. So what we do, we take um, post-consumer textile waste, uh, let's say cotton-rich textile waste, and turn that to a brand new fiber called Infina. That is our kind of like a key thing that we do. And um, uh, we are the company that was started in 2016. Uh, there was a kind of like a, a moment when we started to commercialize the technology. Before mm -hmm. that, it has been researched in Finland for years and years and years. And um, uh, there was a VTT, which is a national research center, that was really kind of like looking into it and uh, trying to find a ways to uh, use the copper made technology itself. And they started to kind of like exploring different raw materials and finally ended up with trying to uh, make uh, new fibers out of uh, our former CTO's uh, genes. And that's why it really became a, a, like, a very interesting innovation. And um, Infinity Fact Company started um, uh, kind of like uh, looking for the funding for it. And uh, uh, we started piloting in 2018 ourselves. And we were very lucky to have kind of like a, a lots of knowledge from the old viscose mill that was. Uh, uh, bankrupt in Finland earlier. And uh, we had so much experience that they were very quickly getting the fiber to the level that it really is a commercially viable option for the emerging materials. And so because it's cellulose, it's biodegradable, is that so? Yes, that is true. And it is, um, um, let's say 99.9% .9 cellulose. There is still a little bit of like a carbamate groups attached to the cellulose chain. But what that gives is it gives that kind of like unique properties to the fiber itself. And that, that is what makes it a little bit like more cotton look and feel than the others. Mm. And, um, and so it's so fascinating and, and wonderful that you have this technology. Is it, is it uh, transportable to places where the, the fabrics already are to avoid that sort of it, you know, the, the thing is moving things around is also part of the, the problem. So yeah. is, it, is it a solution that, you know, can be brought to, to the place where, I mean, there are already places where there are, you know, just piles and piles of textiles or do they need to come to you? Hmm. Yeah, there is a, kind of like a, two things. Um, uh, it is about uh, where the textile waste is and uh, it is also where the textile is, are manufactured. Because we are in kind of like in the middle of the circle, so uh, mm -hmm. the textile waste itself that is usually in uh, let's say Europe or US that is kind of like where you get to kind of most of the textile waste uh, that is collected at the time. So to kind of like have a factory is close to those places where you have the actual material, the feedstock, that is important. But also it's very important to be close to those places where the textiles are manufactured from all fibers. So it is. Uh, and then very uh, useful to have a kind of like a different places to manufacture also. So, and mm -hmm. our, our kind of like whole idea is to license the technology. So uh, there is a kind of like opportunities from the different places to implement our technology with the existing, for example, viscose mills already. Wow. So you'll be sort of like Finnish ambassadors of sustainability, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's that's exciting. Um, and uh, a few a few more questions for you. Um, how do you avoid green washing? Or I learned a new term when I was in in Stockholm: green hushing. Um, there's so much discussion um, about sustainability. It's it's kind of difficult to to talk about it sometimes. In uh, I think there isn't sort of a universal, I mean, maybe there is a universal standard, you know, for experts in the industry, but I think, you know, when the, a lay person, and I consider myself a lay person, because I'm certainly not an expert in sustainability, but when you're being told, oh, organic cotton, or oh, you know, such and such a fabric, or oh, recycled this, it's hard to sort of know how to measure or the proportions of, of what that means. 
Yeah, that's a very good question. And uh, I think that greenwashing, that has been solved a lot. And what that mm. means is that, uh, and, and sustainability is the other word, that is very hard to kind of like uh, put your mind at ease with, because it's not <laughs> only about kind of like how you, for example, recycle, it's, it's so much bigger, it's a social responsibility and all that. But um, uh, for greenwashing, I, I think at the moment, there is so much happening around that, uh, that there's, of course, there is some of that. But most of the brands, for example, they are really looking for the solutions. Uh, but at the moment, those doesn't exist. So uh, it's uh, easy to kind of like um, pinpoint uh, some that, um, that are making uh, sustainability promises, but they can't live up with those. Mm. At the same time, there is no solution. So, so what can they do? Uh, and I think that it is so important to kind of like um, invest on innovations like ours or innovations mm. that are really driving the circularity or driving the sustainable options. Because that is when we get to the level when they have options to do mm. what right. they, they want to. Right. I guess, I mean, a lot of designers, especially young designers that I speak to, they they really, you know, I think that this new generation of designers coming up don't have a choice but to think about sustainability. I mean, they, they can't ignore it. Um, it's something that they've inherited, but, uh, but sometimes they want to make the sustainable choice, but they simply tell me that they can't really afford it, you know, that, that when faced with two things, they just don't you know, as a young company. And some people are getting around that by, you know, upcycling and taking, yeah. you know, what what exists. Um, but, you know, everyone, there's only, there's not only one, you know, way of expression. Some people, you know, work in different ways. Um, so th this, this wonder fabric that you have, or tech, or fiber rather, um, with Infinite, uh, is, can you do things with it? that you can do with natural fibers? Mm. Yeah, I, I think we could. But what we are trying to do here is to create something that can be used like any other fabric you know, that you have, you're used to. So mm -hmm. really kind of like make it a mainstream. Mm -hmm. Because if we kind of like concentrate on making it niche or, and something cool, it's not going to be the one that is going to uh, really uh, allow the circularity to be everyday reality. So mm -hmm. I, I think for us, it's a very important, it's a, it's a um, material that can do what we are used to. Mm. Now there's been, um, you, you know, I've been covering the Scandinavian and Nordic regions for a long time. And there's a lot of people say that it's sort of second nature because of the, the region's, you know, close relationship to nature. But, um, and, and I know in Finland um, and in Sweden, there's been a lot of, uh, a lot of interest in this. Um, some of it relating to the wood industry, you know, and some of it like, like yours, uh, sort of separate from that. Um, what do you think about, you know, the, the Nordic or Scandinavian relationship to, to sustainability? Do you think it's a special, uh, a special one or different than other places in the world? Um, I, I think that we are close to nature. In, in Finland, there's more trees than people. So <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is a, yeah, like very natural to be interested on, uh, on, on that side. But at the same time, I think that there is um, uh, a lot of uh, knowledge about what can be done. And, and that is probably the driving force also. And uh, we are used to make our business out of nature. And I, I think that that is uh, kind of like why the Nordics are always so interested about woods and how to really use that richness that we have. And mm. I, I think that that is probably the kind of like a, a key benefit for us to have that uh, around us. I think it's great. I mean, it's so exciting in Finland right now with um, Aalto University and the students coming out and and a lot of, um, you know, uh, I think, you know, Marimekko is still doing printing and, you know, in Helsinki and a lot of the sustainability, um, you know, innovation. I think it's a super, super exciting time. Um, 
for for the country and and for fashion too. Can you talk to us about some of the companies that are you're working with um, in the fashion uh, fashion? Because I guess your fiber kit doesn't need to just be used for for clothing. I assume it can be used for interiors or industrial or you know other areas as well. But I'm quite interested in what fashion companies you're you're working with. Yeah, so uh, of, of course we are working with the several, but what we have been kind of like public, publicly announced, and that is a different case. Uh, mm -hmm. for, for for example, there is some um, uh, brands like Patagonia, H and M, PVH, Adidas. So it really is a variation of the different types of brands. Also, it's mm -hmm. not only about kind of like a, let's aim for the high in fashion or let's aim for the uh, kind of like a, get into the um, H&Ms or, or Indidexes of the world. I, I think that we, we want to kind of like spread this, this all over because uh, there is a demand in every sector. And uh, I, I think that's a kind of like the, uh, of course, we are very proud of working with Patagonia, for example, who has a very high sustainability promise. And we are very proud also working with the H&M because they are kind of like looking at lots of different options and trying to find a solution. So th there is really kind of like every one of those brands, they have a unique point of view. And mm. it is really uh, kind of like trying to find the best of the best to help us go to the next level with scale up. Mm. And um, for this, uh, are there Infina products on the market now? Hmm. At the moment, probably not. I think that everything is sold out that has been there. And okay, <laughs> but it is, I mean, it is like you, it's, it is in play, but. Yeah, so we, we have been uh, um, releasing uh, with weekday brand and with Wrangler some jeans to the markets. And there is more to come this year, <laughs> quite soon actually. And uh, I, I think that it is more or less about supply. We are still very limited with our pilot factory. So we can't really produce soon enough fast enough mm -hmm. and it, it is always a, kind of like the big trouble with the piloting because it's at the same time it's expensive it's slow and you can't really kind of like please everybody and but we're happy that there has been launches and there will be launches and uh, of course uh, 2024 uh, we are building up the flagship plant that is going to be operational in Finland which will have a 30,000 tons per annum capacity, which is already providing a little bit more material to the markets and we are seeing a lot more infina at that time. That's amazing. And it's just around the corner. Yeah, it's 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 flying. flying. Yeah. Um, are, there, are there other things that you want to share about this company and this wonderful fiber? Hmm. Yeah, I think that if you think about infina itself and what that is, um, I think that what we need to always remember is that uh, it's unique. It's a new type of fiber. It's nothing that you haven't have seen before. And that's what makes it very different from, from the other fibers. Uh, and um, it's so exciting to bring that to the market, like get people to see that how close we can be in a such a feel of cotton, for example, and uh, how it really is uh, something that you can feel proud of wearing. At the same time, it's made from 100% post-consumer textile waste, which it's is amazing. Kind of like a, it, it's reborn. It's 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 wonderful. Hmm. And oh, oh I, can you wash it? I mean, uh, does it have to be washed? I mean, someone once told me I was feeling really guilty. They're like, well, if you have a polyester shirt, you don't have to put it in the dry dryer. But if you have a cotton shirt, you do. And then I hadn't thought about the washing machine and dryer. So I was so focused on you know fibers that like the the life, like the care of the garment, I hadn't factored in at that point, and I was, oh, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, if, if we think about kind of like how to handle Infina in, in washing, you can wash it, you can try it in a dryer, but what we would say is that less you wash, less you dry, uh, the less energy you consume. And so mm -hmm. I, I think that would be good to kind of like wear it until it's really dirty or smelly and, and then wash it. <laughs> but it's not something that needs to be dry cleaned. You can, no, no, you can wash it yourself. Okay, <laughs> that's great. 
Um, well, it's wonderful work that you're doing. I can't wait to to watch it. Um, you know, come to scale, so yeah. uh, so I can try it out, um, and many of us can. I really thank you for your time. Thank you. It was a pleasure.